I wonder um, how much disagreement we do have, in fact, because uh, of the panel, and I know uh, the views of uh, the panel members, I think, pretty well, and I look at people I know in the audience, and actually it feels to me a little like only half the argument is in the room. Uh, my hunch is that probably everybody here would consider themselves an optimist uh, in tobacco harm reduction. That's to say, uh, like when we think uh, there is much more to be gained than lost through tobacco harm reduction, including electronic cigarettes. Um, and uh, I was going to start with a story of uh, a conversation I had just Friday evening. Uh, I was in the pub with my brother, and he said, uh, uh, my brother, I should say, is a committed smoker and a former vapor. And he said, uh, why do you keep banging on about electronic cigarettes? They're bad for you, and they don't work. Now, obviously, I disagreed with him because I disagree on both those counts. Unfortunately, I uh, had a bit of a, an uphill struggle. One, because he has a PhD in cell biology, and I don't. Uh, and the other is, uh, he has an electronic cigarette, and I don't. Uh, he has used, you know, he's had his electronic cigarette for maybe two years, used it on and off, didn't really get on with it. Um, I come from a big Irish Italian family, which means uh, that most of us have been smokers at one time or another, and three are still smokers. Uh, I have my, uh, my big sister, uh, who has used her uh, e-cigarette a lot, and for a while at least, has completely replaced smoking with her uh, e-cigarette. E I have my brother, you don't know about him, He's a bit of a prickly cat. I have uh, another sister uh, who uh, won't even try them. She won't even have a conversation about them. Um, and I think that kind of, uh, in a sense, uh, reflects the diversity, the not the proportions uh, of ex smokers' experience in this country. Um, so we have about a million uh, smokers who currently use electronic cigarettes. Um, and we have, by our survey, about two and a half million who smokers who have tried electronic cigarettes, or used them in the past, don't currently use them. And, and then probably twice as many as that combined with the smokers who have never even tried them. So like my youngest sister. And, um, and, and a whole bunch of them share my brother's views. Rory and I have been doing these surveys on uh, users of uh, electronic, well, just general attitudes of smoking. It's a big survey. And now we have, we've been looking the last three or four years at electronic cigarettes, and now we have quite a large number of users and ex-users. And um, it, it's really quite interesting to see why people stop using them. And, and overall, the largest number stopped using them because they weren't good enough. And but I just think we need a, a system that gets really large numbers, not one million, but you know, close to 10 million smokers using electronic cigarettes, uh, replacing their smoking with electronic cigarettes. So uh, how do we win back that two and a half million disaffected uh, people who've tried uh, vaping and it didn't really work for them? How do we convince the five million who have yet to try to give it a go? Um, and and I think what we need to do is that we have to reassure people that they are safe and effective, both safe and effective. Uh, and at the moment, there are a whole lot of people who think uh, that they're not effective because they've tried them, they've found them to be effective. And a whole lot of people uh, who say they're not safe, uh, even though uh, there's no evidence of, of harm so far. So that, that's my mission. Um, you know, reassure people that electronic cigarettes are safe and effective, as far as we can see. Uh, and that means we need safe and effective products which are plainly uh, and independently validated as safe and effective. I don't think the market can deliver that. I think that, uh, I'm a, a market cynic, uh, I, I think markets uh, act in the interest not for small consumers, but for big producers. It's the big players uh, who get the benefits from markets. So, uh, should you regulate uh, these products as uh, medicines? People keep saying to me, no, they're not medicines. People don't use them as medicines. Therefore, you can't regulate them uh, as medicines. And, and they point out that some vapors have used them to quit, but lots use them for uh, situations where they can't or don't want to smoke, where doctors would call temporary abstinence. Uh, some uh, are committed long-term users. Uh, some have used them just to cut down, to replace some of the cigarettes they smoke. Um, and that's right, but you know what? 
nicotine replacement therapy, currently licensed, are licensed for all those uses too. Okay? There's no reason why you couldn't uh, apply exactly the same standard uh, to those products. So, I mean, if we look at the proportions that people use these products for, according to our survey, so I don't know, we had about a thousand people who no longer use electronic cigarettes, about uh, five, six hundred that currently do, um, and uh, in our latest survey, 34% uh, said they wanted to quit completely, 28% said they wanted uh, to, to be using them to prevent uh, a relapse, because they had relapses before, relapsed to smoking, I think. Um, about one in five said that they were using them uh, to cut down without quitting, they didn't want to quit, uh, and about 15% saying that they were using them for uh, what we call temporary abstinence, or just quitting for a bit, for a while, not quitting for good. So, there is no doubt electronic cigarette users are a key group, a key interest group in this debate, right? We need vapors to have a strong voice, and not enough people uh, are really paying attention to the experience of electronic cigarettes. But there are only one voice, and I've got to say, uh, I have to be concerned with the other voices too. I am concerned, not just with my sister, who's had a great experience, but also my brother, who's become a disaffected vapor, and my sister, uh, who distrusts him so much she won't have him in the room with her. I'm not just con uh, concerned about that, I'm concerned too about uh, the, the rest of the public health lobby. Um, your experience of harm reduction in drug use and uh, is maybe different from mine. Uh, well, you, you said there was a, a wealth fighting, there was a huge amount of fighting, and the same in harm reduction in sexual health, and it was conducted in a way where people wouldn't get off their bloody high horses, and anybody who disagreed with them was a fool or a knave, and that's not good enough. We need a proper grown-up conversation about this. I mean, I think we, uh, and, and you, are having that grown-up uh, grown conversation, but I don't think it's good enough to pretend that everybody else, anybody who disagrees with you, is somehow uh, an idiot. So, thank you. And, and, and that means we have to have a bit of a conversation with some of my, my public health colleagues, because they don't listen enough uh, to uh, smokers and to vapors and to ex-smokers. Um, and uh, what I want them doing is uh, reassuring smokers that there is a safe and effective alternative to smoking. Not spending that same time talking to politicians to try and get electronic cigarettes banned, or to try and get them banned on the tube, or in workplaces, or in taxis. None of that is helpful. So there's a really important job for, uh, for the public health uh, profession in tobacco harm reduction, but it's supporting it, not opposing it. So I, don't know, I guess that's uh, that's where I would uh, end it. Uh, we've got a big bus, and we want them on it too.